Maria Muller is a staff writer at Metro Seer Magazine. In the February issue, she went behind the scenes at Tennyson Tap Burlesque Show, and in March, she's taking readers to all C's collectibles. With a passion for writing and reading comic books, she'll be combining the two in her new blog for Metro Seer coming soon. Please welcome Maria Muller. Hi, Maria. Hi. How are you? I'm good. So let's start with, we'll backtrack a little bit. We'll go to your piece for February, the burlesque piece. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. How did you find that story? Um, and what did you learn from it? Um, it was actually in the, where you guys have the, you list all the stories that are available for us to pick up. Okay. And um, when you mentioned about like positive body image, that got me really excited. So I wanted to go check it out. And um, they had like certain days that they have the show. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to like go after school and just, you know, watch a show. I think it went from like 8 to 10.30. So it was kind of late, but it was worth it. I was really excited to see, you know, what they were going to do. And if you ever can check out the show, you, you really should. It's, it's something to see. Yeah, well, reading your piece, you really brought it to life. And then the photos that went along with it that Carl Payne shot, um, and, and just to see all the different bodies of burlesque. You called it the beautiful bodies of burlesque, but women of all ages, sizes, um, really embracing what body image is and, and, and feeling liberated, you said, through the work that they're doing there at Tennyson Tap? Yeah, there was um, every different kind of size that you could think of. It did not matter. And being positive about you know, what you look like, not caring what anyone else thinks knowing that you feel good about you. Mm -hmm. And all the girls, when I spoke to them, they were just like really excited, you know, to like to explain how good it makes them feel mm -hmm. when they're dancing. And when, you know, they're getting cheered and everything, it, they get really excited about that and it, it's encouraging for them. Um, but they, you know, everybody has their day where they look at their body and like, eh, this. Not so much. And yeah. they have that, you know, too. But, you know, when they get out there and they're just on and everybody's, you know, encouraging them, and mm -hmm. it's really exciting to watch them. I was so surprised at, like, just how flexible <laughs> they are <laughs> and um, how much energy they had. It took me away. Like, wow. I was just like, wow, this is crazy. But I, I would go again, too. I, was that I, your first time going to a burlesque show? It was. Oh, okay. It was the very first time. And what's the crowd like at a show like that? You mentioned that they kind of, if they're feeling a little low energy, the crowd is what really gets mm -hmm. them through. Did you notice that the crowd is really uh, yeah. animated? Or? I think everybody kind of like cheers them on a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that, you know, in particular points of the show where, you know, you'll hear everyone get a lot, a lot louder. Mm -hmm. There's, a, I think, an equal amount of men and women in mm -hmm. the audience. Um, and it's very laid back, you know, just they're having drinks and enjoying it. I thought the, uh, the MC, Squeaky, she really gets everyone riled up too. Okay. Um, she gets on stage and she's like, um, hey, I need somebody to buy me a drink. What's up? And, and everybody starts cheering her on. And then she talks about the girls. And um, it's the only free burlesque show oh, wow. that you can attend. <clears throat> and they do strictly working off of tips, you know, that people put out and um, if it looks like it's going a little, she's like, hey guys, you know that we're free, we're working for you. <laughs> All these girls put a lot of time into sure. you know, getting the dances ready. The costumes were incredible. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, really? Yeah, they, it was just, they go all out and very elaborate. Oh, okay. And this is a monthly show that they do or it's, how often um, is every the... Every other week. Every other week, on wow. On Tuesday night. So. They had initially, the manager liked them so much and how much of a crowd they brought in. He wanted them every week, but the girls also have other jobs too. Besides. I was going to say, do they have day jobs or is this their, are they all performers uh, professionally? They, they all have day jobs. Um, they, they love to do this as well. So, but they do take a lot of time they put into it. Yeah. And um, a lot of them have kids, they, you know, family to take care of and everything okay. too. So, you know, the, being a woman, all rounded and everything they take on sure. a lot. <laughs> and do you remember um, who the, what age the youngest performer was to the oldest performer? What's the spectrum? I think the one girl <clears throat> I interviewed, Parker Bo Bo Peep, she was, I want to say 20 or 21. She was pretty young, mm -hmm. so she might have been the youngest. And then there was a woman um, in her like um, mid-50s, I want to say, mm -hmm. um, and I was told she's a grandmother too. Wow. And she was, she was in tremendous shape. I mean, I was like, wow, I hope I can look That's like that. That's aspirational. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 
Have you ever seen a burlesque show before? I've never been to a burlesque show. I, I haven't either. Do. I've been wanting to go to um, the Clock Tower Cabaret right. as well. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit because isn't there a show coming up that you've heard about? Yeah, one Tower? of the dancers, she had told me that there's one coming up, um, I think, the, towards the end of March. And she's going to be actually directing it. Oh, neat. Yeah, and they said it was going to be... Um, performed in the, and I think the proceeds go to Planned Parenthood is what she was telling me. We'll have to make a night yeah, of that okay. one. That sounds good. Okay, so that piece, uh, Beautiful Bodies of Burlesque, is in the February issue of Metrosphere, mm -hmm. and so that's available in print and online. And then March, uh, we're in production on March right now, and you have two pieces, actually. You have All Seas Collectibles and then Anna Festa. So let's talk about All Seas first. Tell us about how you discovered them, what you loved, and what you learned. Um, I think I started going there about 10 years ago because mm -hmm. they're in Aurora, so they're pretty close to where I live, which is convenient. Okay. Um, they were at a different location at first, um, but where they moved now, they had a little more room to put everything up because it's not just comic books. They also have coins and cards and pretty, like any old memorabilia stuff is in the store and, and they, buy, they buy and sell trade, okay. like all of that. Mm -hmm. But they do say that comic books are the biggest attraction right now. They're their biggest thing. And you're a comic book lover. Yes, I am. When did that passion start? Uh, I think when I was seven years old. Really? So it's been an ongoing thing for a while. And I think I started collecting when I was nine. Wow. So I have That's quite awesome. a few. Those big white boxes that you see full of, com I have a lot of those. Do you? Yeah, I'm the type that puts them in the plastic bag with the backer <laughs> and the tape, and they're all in order, and it's very, I, I have to have them to know where they are if I need them ever. Cause, and I, I don't just like put them away, though. I take them out and read them a lot, too. Do you? Yes, and um, I've encouraged my kids to read as well. Mm -hmm. um, my older son, he got into it as much as me, so he started his own collection as well. And we sound like complete nerds when we start talking <laughs> about it. It's really bad. Well, and I notice even your footwear, you have uh, Spider-Man on your shoes. Is this one of your favorite comic heroes? I or? like him a lot. I'm a big fan. Two of my daughters, that's their, that's their favorite. They love Spider-Man. Do they? Yes. Mine is actually Wolverine. Okay. But because I couldn't find any Wolverine shoes, I went for the next one. So. Well, if I get you in Secret Santa, I will look for some Wolverine <laughs> shoes for sure. And you said you started your comic book love when you were seven. What initially started that? What was the big... Um, it's funny. Like, um, back then, it wasn't so much a superhero thing. I was into, like, Archie, Richie Rich. Um, there was uh, some soldier ones, like Sad Sack. Probably nobody's heard of that. Um, and then ElfQuest at age eight. And ElfQuest, I still love today. That's probably my favorite of all, and that was actually created by a couple, husband and wife. She's the artist, and he's the writer, and her artwork is so amazing. Like, I got attracted to that right away. Oh, wow. So. And have you ever created your own or, or tried your hand at, at making your own uh, Maria <laughs> comic book? I have not. I, I'm not a very good artist. My son, actually, um, because he likes it so much and he, he loves to draw, mm -hmm. he's an artist, he actually started drawing all the characters on the top of my boxes. And so all that artwork, as he grew, they got better and better and more, you know, elaborate and impressive. And, and I've got to, so I have like that forever on my nice. comic book That's boxes. Really cool. Like nice. how much better his artwork got. That's really special. That's I, really cool that yeah. this is something you and your kids can bond over and do together. Yeah, I actually um, have, it's like my you know, Facebook um, back page is me and four of them, because one had to take the picture, going to the um, Spider-Man movie uh, a few years ago, and we're all dressed in Spider-Man gear, Aww. and it's like just a nerd family. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the Christmas card right now. Mm -hmm. Are you all going to go see the, the Wolverine uh, movie that's coming out? I the wish. Um, I only have two that live in the state right now, uh -huh. and the rest are out of state. My son especially, it was a tradition for us to always go the first night out, Thursday night, to see every comic book movie. We always did it together. So now we go and see it, and then we Skype and talk to each other yeah. about it the next day. I love the traditions you've yeah. built around that. That's very cool. Um, so we're, we're running out of time, but I want to just touch on your last piece, Anna Festa, mm -hmm. and then tell everyone about your new blog that's coming out. So tell us uh, about the Anna Festa story. That's also going to be in the March issue. Yes, that was another one where it, it kind of like was about body image, you know, and being positive. 
because she does like sizes two through twenty eight, mm -hmm. and she makes the, the her creations are incredible. Um, she has this way of putting together like shapes and colors to just accentuate the best parts of everyone, mm. and not you know there's so many different sizes. And where girls are, you know, bigger up here or maybe down here mm -hmm. or in the middle, you know, and she makes them for everyone. And it's really impressive what she's done. She, her story was incredible. When I got to talk to her, I was, I was in awe because she's been through so much throughout her life. Wow. And because um, there was a bout where she, uh, she went through cancer mm -hmm. and um, getting through that was a really difficult time in her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, what stuck with me the most is when she was done, she was like, if I had to go back and go through all the hell that it was again, I, it made me the person I am. I would do it all the same. That's fantastic. Yeah, wow. Wow. And where is she based, this designer? She is here. She's based in yes. Denver. Yes. She's originally from Colorado. <coughs> okay. She did actually live in New York and then had, you know, she was involved with a lot of designers out mm -hmm. there that, you know, are very popular and have, you know, become pretty famous. And um, then she came back here because of, you know, things going on with the cancer. She wanted to be around her family again. Mm -hmm. And um, for a while she left it because, you know, there was a lot of emotional stuff going on. But trying to find um, something to wear because she did gain weight because of the medications they had her on okay. was a frustrating thing for her. So it kind of gave her the idea of, like, we shouldn't have to go through this. You know, we should have quality and choices you know, where, and different yes, sizes. Yes. Definitely that we can buy and and still look good in. Wonderful. And so finally your blog is going to be called Comic Mom. Comic, Comic Mom. Mom. Yeah, I fitting, love it. very fitting. I love it. And uh, each week you're going to tackle or every other week you're tackling a different uh, comic yeah, uh, scenario it, and Yeah, I have a few ideas. Um, this first one I kind of wanted to go in pretty light. So I kind of did a list of my top 10 favorite women. Um, I've, it's always been a thing to me, like, just, I like to see strong women in, you know, characters, in, mm -hmm. and not just, like, physically, but, you know, their personalities, their positivity, and, you know, being a kid growing up and, and like, looking up to some of these girls. I mean, they weren't my mom, you know, she's way more awesome, but they were really, <laughs> you know, it was impressive, you know, and I always kind of got excited about that, so I did a top ten list of my favorite female characters. <laughs> great, great. And all of that will be available on mymedmedia.com. So thank you so much. It was wonderful. Yes, I feel like you. we could talk to you all day. Um, I love the stories that you're covering, and, and we're going to see even more great things from you, I know, going forward. So thanks again, Maria. Perfect. We'll be back.